you are about to see is our Lord Matthew being on an angry rant of how he would cheat it and remind the Wii Paper Jam 2 by an origami douche when he reviews the latest Paper Mario game made before his aforementioned sequel dreams of having the Koopalings team up the Paper Conference. This is for you to watch and see, Nintendo. We hope you enjoy this experience. Good day, VA fans. This is Matthew back with another video of Matt Reviews. Today we will be reviewing the new Paper Mario that was made before Marlin G Paper Jam 2. Paper Mario, the origami king who steals paper Bowser minions and held back the paper couplings from teaming up with the regular selves. The game starts like this. Paper Mario and Paper Luigi get an invitation to an origami festival. However, when they arrive, Toe Town is empty. And Paper Peaches becomes some origami creep! Then the evil jackass King Oli, who disguised himself as an origami yellow shy guy, comes from the origami kingdom to wrap Paper Peach's castle and five massive streamers and places it at the top of Faraway Mountain while turning Paper Bowser's minions to his origami freaks the fold sort. But I'm getting ahead of myself. When I saw the first trailer for the game while I was in the bathroom and I named 14 Fletcher say my mind's initial reactions weren't pretty. FUCKING HALFWIT! <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker! Nintendo went back on their promise to reveal Mario Luigi Paper Jam 2 before or during the summer of 2020 and make this instead. But as a reviewer, it's my duty to read this game, so let's get it on! The overworld has various open world levels that Paper Mario can traverse seamlessly, even going to new places on a boat, just like The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, and Phantom Hourglass. Paper totes are folded into various origami things, like a dog, a butterfly, even an egg on a frying pan. When you free those paper totes, not only would you get coins in their things, but they'll also return to Toad Town, restoring valuable services to the location, like selling items and opening the dock. You'll even be aided in battle by them throwing objects at enemies and giving them items. Speaking of battles, the battle system is completely different from the other Paper Mario games. While you have to use stickers and cards with some things on the side in the last two games, you can actually move the battlefield around and lining up enemies to bring the pain down on them, but it takes strategy to ensure total victory. Unlike Circus Charm Color Splash, your jump and hammer are always your options to attack, just like the last three Paper Mario games, along with jump and hammer attack upgrades, though those stronger variants break after a while. You can also break accessories, which grant Paper Mario benefits both in battle and on the overworld, similar to badges from the first two games. But of course, unlike Sticker Star and Color Splash, you won't have to fight alone, since partners return in the form of certain Paper Toads and Kip Troop minions, like Professor Toad, Bobby, and Amnesia Paper Bob Omb, even Paper Kimmick and Paper Bowser Jr. However, characters join and leave along the way, and they're shuffling cast of colorful characters while Paper Mario retains Olivia as his little psychic. On um, part of Paper Luigi, of course. Olivia herself, of course, can help Paper Mario with certain abilities like the Thousand Fold Arms, which can open up new pathways and fix up bridges and transform to certain volumental bosses like a giant tortoise that spews sand and manipulates earth, or a water spouting dragon with magic circles, even during the overworld. And speaking of bosses, Ollie himself has illusion of stationery. Generals of the Folded Army consisted of colored pencils, rubber band, hole punch, scissors, stapler, and tape. Yes, I said tape. The boss fights are different from the usual battles, having to turn the battlefield to reach your opponent and damage them and explain their flaws to have them damage themselves, like closing colored pencils' case to have them hurt by his own missiles. Of course, while the game is fun, having to fight paper Bowser minions forcibly converted into folded soldiers like Galoombas. Chew Goombas, Nipper Plants, Bloopers, Cheep Cheeps, Crowbers, Charging Chucks, and Mike Goombas can get to you in about two hours or more, wanting you to eventually punish King Ollie for what he has done. Like shredding him and throwing his ranks into the fires of hell! Even Paper Bowser Jr. notices how rich some parts of the games are. Even that in the thought of reuniting with Bowser Jr., which I can send in the end of the game, since we're still owed Mario Luigi Paper Jam 2 to this day. As I've seen some people claim that this isn't Mario Luigi Paper Jam for various Paper Kubitscher minions like Bone Goombas, even though it is because they want to fight alongside their regular counterparts, and King Ali denies them that chance to this stupid origami plot. I give this game an 8.5 out of 10 because while it's good, that minion still will pay for his crimes for pulling back Mario and Luigi Paper Jam 2! A 
may I ask you where you're going? The lunch and then Asgard. I'm sorry, you are? Alexander Pierce. He's the man that bought the folks behind Nick Fury. Oh. My friends call me Mr. Secretary. I'm going to have to ask you to turn that prisoner over to me. Uh, Loki will be answering to Odin himself. No, he's going to answer to us. Odin can have what's left. And I'm going to need that case. That's been shield property for over 70 years. For crimes against the... Be a great prosperity. I command the execution of... King Ollie! Thank you guys for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support our cause, please hit the subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications for the next time you get back on the side. If you want to keep doing YouTube videos, please hit the subscribe button and be sure to share your videos with all your friends and share your friends. Today you're representing Cal.